Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Old Sarge Collects. This is episode 21 of the Diamond Star set. And to quickly recap episode 20, I covered four Hall of Famers, all of whom I had to skip over in numerical order because I didn't yet have the cards. So when I finally picked up all the cards, um, I shared them all in one episode. So we covered card number one, Lefty Grove, which was a, a huge pickup for me. Card number 14, Bill Terry. Card number 44, Rogers Hornsby. And we finished up with card number 50, Mel Ott. So the lineup for today, I've got uh, one Hall of Famer, and uh, he's the last card, and just so happens to be probably one of the most beautiful cards in the whole set. So I'm really excited about sharing this card with you. But the rest of these players all have interesting stories, um, or the cards themselves have uh, uh, something special about them. So let's go ahead and get this started. And the first card I'm going to share with you in numerical order, card number 80, and that is of uh, Louis Chioza. And so Louis Chioza was born in Tallulah, Louisiana in 1910. He made his major league debut in 1934 as a utility player for the Philadelphia Phillies. They switched him back and forth between outfield and infield, usually playing like second base in, in the infield. Um, in 1935, Lou and his brother Dino appeared in two games together, making them one of the first sets of brothers to play on the same team in Major League Baseball. You know, another obvious set for this um, time frame would have been Paul and Lloyd Wayner. And um, so you know, we've, we've discussed one of those players in uh, this set so far. So I've been talking a lot about night games in recent videos. Now, Lou Chioza plays a very important part in some of those night games. So he was the he happened to be the leadoff batter for the Phillies when he appeared against the Reds in Cincinnati in the first night game in Major League history on May 24th, 1935. You know, this makes him uh, the first player in history to bat in a Major League night game. So that's some significance for him. On May 30th, 1935, the Phillies were playing against the Boston Braves in a doubleheader. Babe Ruth was playing left field for Boston at the time. In recent games, Babe Ruth had shown signs of weakness in the outfield. His batting average had dwindled down to 200, and other players purposely had been hitting left or hitting to left field, knowing that Babe uh, Babe Ruth would misplay or mishandle the ball. In the bottom of the first inning with two outs, Chioza hit a short fly ball down the left field line that would have ordinarily been a double. Due to his advanced age and decreased mobility, Ruth stumbled after the ball in the outfield, and Chioza took advantage of the situation by passing up third base and headed, headed for home in an attempt for an infield home run. Well, Babe Ruth was able to get the ball uh, to the relay shortstop, who threw the ball home to barely stop Chioza at home plate. The inning ended, and Ruth stood there for a minute, folded up his glove, and walked off the field into the clubhouse, never to return to the field again. This was his last game, and that play against Louis Chioza was his deciding factor that he had um, uh, outplayed his mobility. So... Um, uh, the inning ended, and, and so anyway, I figure uh, Babe Ruth knew uh, then that he needed to call it quits. In 1936, Lou was sold to the New York Giants and was used as a utility player and outfielder. He played with the Giants through the 1939 season, and near the end of the 1939 season, Chioza collided with another player while chasing a pop-up. As a result, Lou suffered a compound leg fracture, ending Lou's season and ultimately his career. His lifetime batting average is a 277. He had 197 RBIs and 14 home runs. And Lou Chioza died in 1971 at the age of 60. So let's talk about the card a little bit. On the back of the card, it's a uh, blue back from 1935, but it gives the stats for 1935 as well. So I actually kind of consider this a 1936 issue. Um, the fielding tip on the back says, never rush at the ball head on and take your chance on getting it at the top of the bounce. The infielder needs to study the ball as it approaches and either moving up a few steps or back to get it uh, between hops. And the front of the card 
really is a beautiful card. Um, so it's got Lucioza in the in the forefront right there, very prominent in the forefront. He's got his Phillies hat on. You can see part of his hand, part of his glove right here. Um, in the background, you see a player running, uh, running um, along the bases, and you see another player in the background that looks like um, looks like would be second base, and I think Lucioza might be on third base at this time. So really love this image. Uh, really neat image for the set. All right. So let's talk about the next card, and that is card number 81, and that's Bill Delancey. Now, this happens to be one of my favorite cards in the set for a completely different reason. Um, more or less, it's one of my favorite cards in the set, in, in my set, not the whole set um, in general. So Bill Delancey was... Born November 28th, 1911 in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I gave his exact birthday for a reason. I'll tell you later. He made his major league debut in 1932 as a catcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. In 1934, Delancey made the Cardinals' regular playing roster and shared the catcher's position with Spud Davis. Delancey and Davis were a catching platoon for that amazing Gas House Gang 1934 World Series season. Bill Delancey played in the 1935 season, but by mid-year, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Realizing the seriousness of his condition, he voluntarily retired from the Cardinals in 1936. In 1937, the Cardinals hired the weekend Delancey as one of its Class D farm team managers. He led the Albuquerque uh, Cardinals for three years from 1937 to 1939, and during that time, he won two Arizona-Texas League championships. Being in the dry climate improved his health enough to return to the field in 1938, where he played nine games in 1938, he played 19 games in 1939, and 15 games in 1940. Over his short but illustrious career, Bill Delancey played in a total of 219 games, amassing 173 hits with 32 doubles, 10 triples, 19 home runs, 85 RBIs, and an overall 289 batting average. Bill Delancey returned to managing minor league teams for the 1941 and 42 seasons, but when World War II uh, intervened, many minor league teams suspended operations or folded entirely, and Delancey's managerial career ended in 1942. Unfortunately, Bill Delancey never fully recovered from his tuberculosis, and it gradually developed into a painful lung disease. And uh, Bill Delancey ended up dying on his 31st birthday. I'm sorry, 35th. His 35th birthday on November 28th, 1946. So he literally died on his birthday. Um, so let's talk about the card a little bit. And let's start with the back of the card. It's a blue back 1935 card. Gives the stats for 1934. The tip on the back of this card talks about catchers curling their fingers when about to catch the ball. Now, that's referring to their free hand, not their, their glove hand. It says, by keeping his bare hand curled, it saves them uh, from getting broken or sprained fingers from foul tips. Now, let's talk about the front of the card. Now, I, I also like this front of the card. You've got Bill in the, the, the forefront there. You've got tarps. Um, you know, piled up in the background for rainy days. You've got two players leaned up against the dugout here with the dugout railing. So really neat, um, interesting pose there. Uh, Bill is in his Cardinals uniform, and he's squatting down in the catcher's pose. He's got his glove there and presumably the ball in his glove. Um, what What's important about this card, though, to me, is where it comes from. So it comes from the Lionel Carter Collection. And um, this card originally belonged to Lionel Carter, one of the hobby's original pioneers. And I'm honored to own this card, and I'm amazed, actually, that 87 years ago, Lionel Carter would have pulled this card from a pack that he purchased himself and stored in a scrapbook for centuries. Uh, look at the pristine condition on this card. You know, and I, I really lucked out when I found this card because... There's typically a premium that comes with the Lionel Carter cards from his collection. Uh, the seller didn't add the premium to this card, and so I purchased it at a regular cost for a common in this grade, and this is in a grade of a six. 
So I paid basically whatever a normal um, Diamond Stars Common would cost in a six and uh, didn't pay that premium. And so uh, for that reason, I'm not really sure that the seller knew what they actually had. Uh, but I'm honored to have it and, um, you know, love having this card in my collection. So that's Bill Delancey, and that's my card from the Lionel Carter collection. The next card is of John Babich, and let's learn a little bit about John Babich. Um, there wasn't really a whole lot of information I could find on him, but uh, he was born in 1913 in Albion, California, he made his major league debut in 1934 as a pitcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Babbage pitched for Brooklyn in 1934 and 1935. He pitched for the Boston Bees in 1936. From 1937 to 39, he went back down to the minor leagues. Then he was called up again and pitched for the Philadelphia Athletics from 1940 to 41. Babbage had his best season in 1940 with the Athletics when he went 14 and 13 with a 373 ERA. Following the 1941 season, he went back down to the minor leagues where he pitched until the age of 32 in 1945. John Babbage died in 2001 at the age of 87. Let's look at the back of the card. So card number 82 here um, is a blue back from 1935 and it gives the stats for 1934. And um, the, the pitching tip on the back the back of the card tells pitchers where to throw the ball depending on the batter's stance. It also says to study the batter when standing in the batter's box. So now let's look at the front of the card. Uh, so in the front of this card, you've got John Babbage in his uh, red pinstriped Dodgers uniform, which I'm going to have to go back and look to see if this is factual or if this is just uh, liberties that the artist took. And let me know in the comments, did the Dodgers wear red pinstripes during this time? Anyway, um, in the background, you can see another player. And then you can also see the scoreboard in the background, which is kind of cool. Um, another thing you can see is this flag out here. So I really like this card as well and the details of it. And that's card number 82, John Babbage. Now the last card in this group um, of four is my favorite card. And again, like I said before, possibly the most beautiful card in the whole set. And that is of Lloyd Wayner. So let's learn a little bit about Lloyd. Because he had a longer career and he's a Hall of Famer, um, I had to shorten the notes that I took on him. So I'm going to give you some cliff notes here. Paul Wayner, a.k.a. Big Poison, was born in 1903 in Hera, Oklahoma. Um, he made his major league debut in 1926 as a right fielder for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Paul played in the majors for four teams from 1940, I'm sorry, 1926 to 1945. His first 15 seasons, he played with the Pirates and at the time of his retirement was referred to as the greatest pit, uh, Pirates outfielder. And I think we all probably know who the other greatest Pirates outfielder would be. Um, and that would be Roberto Clemente. Um, as many collectors are aware, Paul was paired up with his younger brother, Lloyd Wayner, Little Poison, in the Pirates outfield. Lloyd was the center fielder and often was behind Paul in the batting lineup. They once hit back-to-back -back home runs off of a New York Giants pitcher. After his time with the Pirates, Paul was traded to the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1941, then to the Boston Braves for the rest of 41 and all of 42. Um... Then he went back to the Dodgers for uh, the 43 and 44 seasons, and he finished his career with the Yankees in 1945. Paul Wiener became the seventh member of the 3,000 hit club. His lifetime batting average is a 333, and he amassed 3,152 hits, 113 home runs, and 1,309 RBIs. In 1927, Big Poison in the National was the National League batting champion, uh, the National League RBI leader, and was named the National League MVP. Overall, he won three National League batting, batting championships and was a four-time All-Star. Wayner was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1952. He died in 1965 at the age of 62, and Paul Wayner's number 11 was retired by the Pittsburgh Pirates in 2007. Let's talk about the card a little bit. 
uh, sorry, the uh, back of the card is a green back, and it's from 1935, and it gives the stats for 1934. Um, the There's a tip on the back, and it says that boys naturally right-handed can learn to bat from the left side of the uh, with a little practice. It calls batting from either side of the plate turnaround hitting instead of what it's called today, which is switch hitting. So um, now the front of the card, again, going back to my original statement, probably the most beautiful card in the set. And if it's not the most beautiful, then it's easily in the top three most beautiful cards of this set. Uh, what I really love about it is the color contrast. Those bright red colors really pop in this card. And you've got Lloyd uh, standing, in, standing in the forefront of the card with his white uh, pirate's uniform, red stitching, and then he's got red uh, sleeves on. And he's um, holding that bat and he's choking up on it. And I like that his hat's kind of uh, cocked to one side. Now, in the background, there's another Pirates player. And if you see closely, that is uh, player number 28. Well, I looked up in the Baseball Almanac uh, online, and according to the Almanac, there was no, no one on the 1934 or the 1935 Pirates roster with that jersey number. So this is obviously some liberties that the artist took in this card, but it's really a neat addition. And then another thing I love about this card is the umpire shown here. There aren't very many cards with umpires shown in, in the card in this set. So I really love that addition, along with the catcher behind uh, Paul here. So one of my favorite cards in the whole set because of the, um, the, the artistry of it. Anyway, that concludes... Episode 21 of the Diamond Star set. And I uh, hope everybody has a great week. Keep hunting the good stuff. And until next time, take care.